Okay, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be making up a wiring harness uh, to go into the power wheels to make it 24 volts. So we have to put a relay in it when you're running aftermarket batteries because the factory batteries have a like a kill switch built into it, so like an over over uh, override. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solder these clips on because I don't like dealing with loose connections. Okay, what we do is we spritz that with a bit of water, cools it off. And what we're going to do is we've got some heat shrink tube here, so we'll cut us off a little section so that we get nice connections like this. Okay, there's one of the soldered connections I already did. There's the other soldered connection going to the the 30 amp breaker is what I meant before. So if the battery goes to overheat, it doesn't fry any of the switches or controllers that are on the Hot Wheels. Mm -hmm. So we just cut off a section that we want, the length desired. It's collapsed, so I'm going to open it up the pencil just so it's easy to insert the, the wire. Position it where you would like it to be seated, then you heat it up with a lighter or other heat source, heat gun, and it causes the shrink tubing to um, make a watertight connection, but also it keeps them from pulling apart. Not with the soldering we would need it, but it just gives it that nice, nice look that I like anyways. So what I've done is I've taken regular connectors, and these are the crimp style. And this plastic covering here, housing, what happens is when you crimp it, it cracks, it moves, it becomes loose. And then the crimp itself, it doesn't seem to hold up to my rigorous uh, putting it on and off the connections on the Power Wheels cars, and then they come loose. And of course, when you have your kids and they're fighting to go for a ride, anything that makes for downtime is pretty rough. So here you can see I just peeled it off. What we're going to do is we're going to make the other end now. So what you want to do is go and measure how far you want to bear the wire. This is pretty heavy stuff. So I'm using the, the 6 gauge uh, wire stripping size. Clear my connection. Now because I've already got the other end on, I have to make sure to put the heat shrink tubing on first. Otherwise it will be almost impossible to get it over top without wrecking it after soldering the second connection on there. Once again, this is mostly just for looks, so when uh, my kids look under the hood of their Hot Wheels, or if other people are looking at it, it just makes it look a little neater. Okay, so then you want to make sure that that's the length you want. I put it in a little uh, vice clamp here just so that it makes it stationary and easy for me to solder. I'm using a little butane torch here. It's a Ronson. Uh, fairly cheap. It does a nice job. I find soldering irons just take a long time. I'm a little impatient sometimes and this works really well for me. Okay, and this is electrical solder with built-in flux. We're dealing with higher amperages here, so we're not needing to be, uh, you know, with that thin wire. 
with a thin solder. Spray it down with water, cools it down so I can handle it pretty quickly with my bare hands. Pull my heat shrink tubing over to the position I'd like it to shrink. And then repeat with a little lighter to shrink it down onto the wire. Okay, grabbed it pretty nicely. Now I have my next connection here. So I'm going to be putting this on the positive section of the power wheels. So one part goes to the to the battery, the other section goes to the, the power wheels factory connection. Okay, I love it when you make a mistake. So what I did was I put on the open prong connector and then I went and I soldered on the female connector and it was supposed to be a little made up device that I make to go on to the into the factory harness. So I cut those out of some stock. find the wire we're going to use. We bear a section using the wire stripper. Okay, soldered there from the last solder joint. No one needs to know. So it goes around the wire. A little better there. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that the way that looks. Let's take the solder, pinch, pinches in one section to hold it. All right, it's pretty good. Holder, my solder. Okay, it goes all the way through. Spare a little bit of water. Cools it down for me. That one's done. So now that one gets connected to the other side of my 30 amp breaker. I said you need to put one of these on to protect your switches. How do I know that? Because I fried a foot pedal switch, which then of course you have to order one up. And of course your kids are just waiting for that to come in via the mail. Better to avoid the downtime when the little guys are so anxious. Okay, 
And there's my positive connection. Then we may need to make a jumper for the ground to the battery. And this one will get a female connection on one end and then the, the homemade um, device to go into the factory wiring harness. And of course this is the old style before I did the heat shrink tubing. And I just don't like the way it crimps and ends up looking and wiggling around on there. So we're going to replace it with a better, the better looking heat shrink tubing. So just measure this one up, we'll rinse and repeat. Just a wire stripper. I'm also testing out a new camera there, like a little GoPro jobby. So I can't zoom in or focus, just trying to get everything to see how it works. I don't know how the audio is going to turn out as well. Hoping it's going to turn out pretty good. Got a little roll of the heat heat shrink tubing here. Instead of buying the pre-cut strands, bought this little tube. Pre-cut these, I'll slip them on. this one here I'm just going to need the female connection strip off the plastic housing all I do is clip it on the side and kind of squirt along that side there and that just kind of pops right off always want to make sure that you pre unroll enough solder for you to be working with it's a pain in the neck trying to unroll it while you got the torch going A little too hot on this one, kind of melted the, the housing a bit, but, oh, and it shrunk my heat shrink tubing. Okay, lesson learned. Make sure the heat shrink tubing is further back before soldering the joint. I did overheat that joint a bit more than I would have liked. It won't affect the performance of the, the part. OK, 
Okay. Let's get another piece of heat shrink tubing. Make sure I slip it back far enough that it doesn't become stuck on the wire when I'm doing my solder joint. If I pre-cut these up, then I just have to bend them so they go around the wire. beauty about doing stuff for kids they don't get overly particular of how your work looks so as we're learning and becoming better and they become older then they think you were always as good as you are when they start to realize that you're good all right make sure I have enough pre unwound so I don't get stuck there should turn my torch down I had the shrink tubing far enough back that it didn't become stuck on the wire. I also didn't do this on the other the other lead and then I thought you know it might give it a little nicer look to have it on near the end. If I like the way this looks it's, it doesn't cost much just to make a new one up. Scrounge up some wire. Here we go. So we have two kind of professional looking ends there. Now I just need a jumper like this one to join the two batteries uh, to bring it from 12 volts to 24 volts. And they just get the two female connectors on the end. 